Friends, you are listening to God's Last Message of Mercy, a program brought to you by Advent Messenger Church. This is a Christian program dedicated to the teaching and preaching of the everlasting gospel presented in the three angels' messages found in the prophetic book of Revelation chapter 14 for the purposes of preparing a people for the soon coming of Christ. Welcome, friends. You're watching God's Last Message of Mercy. I'm Pastor David Jimenez. Hey, friends. I'm Sergio Jimenez. And we got a special guest with us, Brother Andy Roman, who I've known for many years, a good brother of mine. He's here with us. Brother Andy, how are you doing? Well, praise the Lord, uh, Brother David and Sergio. It's a blessing to be with both of you. Uh, we've always enjoyed the moments that we've shared, and uh, we look forward to discussing this very serious issue that's uh, facing God's people today. Amen. 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 True indeed. And um, before we begin, let's just have a word of prayer. Absolutely. Let us pray. Our loving Father, which art in heaven, we come before your throne of grace at this hour, Lord, seeking for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, Lord, yes. that you may give us the wisdom, that you may give us the clarity of mind, Lord, that we may be able to understand the day and time that we're living in, and the necessity of being prepared for your soon coming and for the time of trouble that is ahead of us as your people. Let's pray for your guidance, and we ask you all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Well, we're in some serious times. We're living in some serious times, and you guys know that. And we see how critical the time is and what is taking place in adventism at the same time as well yes. among god's people but what is but what is so important to understand and to see is this great movement that satan is working with right now in the world which is the ecumenical movement amen in other words the the global christian form mm -hmm. also and known as Catholic evangelization. That's right. Of not only Protestants, but of the rest of the world. That's right. And that's what we want to talk about a little bit, Brother Andy. We want to we want to discuss with those that are watching, um, you know, how serious the time is and the great deception that is taking place and where we're going in prophecy. So I um I would just like to begin with what are your thoughts on Pope Francis urging the global Christian Forum to create a visible unified body and, and how bold it's getting how bold it continues to push forward which was which was a meeting that took place in in April 15th through the 20th of this year mm -hmm. the global gathering of the of the Christian Forum so what are your thoughts on that well, that's a very important topic, and I'm glad to be able to share with you, and we can kind of help our brothers understand that, listen, there's two global universal calls that are being made in these last days. Yes. God has a final warning message that he wants to arouse the world to prepare them for the greatest event, the coming of Jesus. And of course, to warn them against the mark of the beast that's going to try to cause the world to be lost. Mm -hmm. That's one side. But on the other side is the counterfeit. Mm -hmm. We as Adventists, we should know the counterfeit. We've been given prophecies in Daniel and Revelation. And also we've been giving a divine inspired commentary in the book, Great Controversy, that has warned us about all these things. There's no reason for us to be confused on this issue. But unfortunately, uh, the confusion is being created. And that confusion is described in the Revelation 18. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. The whole world is drunk, inebriated, confused on the issues. And it's sad that many of our people are beginning to sip from that same cup mm -hmm. and they're bringing that same confusion yes. even within Adventism. Listen, this whole ecumenical thing is causing Adventists to have what is called an identity crisis. Yes. Identity crisis means you forget who you are, who you are. Oh, yes. what your mission is, and the work and the direction in which we're supposed to be taking people to. 
So yes, what, what we see, and this is an important subject, and obviously we, we're all going to kind of develop this uh, conversation, but we're seeing the great counterfeit, Satan's counterfeit. Yes. Great controversy tells us that Satan desires to unite them all together into one body. And that's exactly what this call, that Pope Francis is urging people to create a unified, visible body. God is calling them to come out of that movement. That's one right. side is being called, let's come together. Let's come together and build a Tower of Babel. Yes. Let's all come in one common purpose. And God is saying, no, you need to come out of that. So that's, that's what we're dealing with, uh, brothers and sisters. We're dealing with the two conflicting voices. One come out and the other one come on in. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. The ecumenical movement, Brother Andy, is so dangerous. Huh. It's a masterpiece that Satan has developed to sweep the world into one mind, one body, one world religion, and with the papacy at the head. And it, and it is so dangerous because the, the, the main goal of the ecumenical movement that's going on right now is to silence the voice of truth, to silence the present truth of the three angels' messages, yes. God's last message of mercy for yes. the world, to prepare the world to receive Christ at his second coming and to be able to come out of all false forms of worship and false teachings. It's very unfortunate that, um, you know, as Adventists, especially with the gift of prophecy, with the truth from the word of God, that we're not able to distinguish between these two opposing powers, these two opposing entities in a, in a, in a drastic time that we're living in now. The Bible says that the, it, it's no wonder Satan himself appears as an angel of light, and this work of ecumenism seems to be a herald of peace and unity. And it's unfortunate because I've even had personal experience where certain Adventist brothers and sisters, which we pray for, of course, are, are quick to defend and, 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 and quick to oppose anyone who would speak against such a, a quote-unquote great movement of unity. But brothers and sisters, as we always say, we're not sitting pointing at the individuals. We're looking at the leadership. We're looking at who is it that is in charge of this ecumenical movement that causes us as Adventists to stand up and sound the alarm. Right. It's an unfortunate thing that unfortunately a lot of brothers and sisters don't see it that way. Yeah, um, very quickly, um, the question we gotta ask, when we see our, when we see our Adventist leaders joining these ecumenical meetings, mm -hmm. the question we gotta ask is, is Adventism just another addition to mainstream Christianity? Mm, that's a good are, question. We, are we just another addition? Um, are we just another movement, mm -hmm. you know, another religious movement added? And, you know, who are we as a people, as Seventh-day Adventists? Mm -hmm. You know, are we a distinctive people where we raised by God with a distinctive message? And those are the those are the questions we have to ask, because if we're just another addition to uh, to the to the Christian denominations mm -hmm. with nothing to offer, if we're not distinct with a special message, mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter if we join the ecumenical movement. But we've been raised by God. Our movement, the Seventh-day Advent movement, has been raised by God for us to be a separate people with a special end-time message to lead the world back to true worship of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. What are David, your thoughts on that, Brother Andy? Brother David, you, you nailed it right on the head. Hmm. And, you know, Sergio, you brought up a very good point, you know, with all the light that we have in the spirit of prophecy. Listen, without division, the people will perish. Yeah. Without that revelation, mm -hmm. God's prophet, we're going to perish. Yes. And yet, what, what the ecumenical movement is doing, 
it's changing the nature of all the churches. Mm -hmm. It's changing your thinking. You know, this whole thing about the DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, inclusion that yes. is permeating society completely. Yes. It's, it's, it's in being infused in governments. It's in the universities. It's coming into the churches with this ecumenism. Mm. And what, what that philosophy does, it makes you change your complete outlook. It changes how we used to do business, and now we have to do things completely differently. Yes. And so, yes, what the ecumenical movement is going to do, it's going to cause us to, to realize or to accept the foolish notion that we are just one of thousands of churches, yes. and every church is the same. Every That's what they're teaching, mm -hmm. you know, in the videos, uh, this Dr. Casely, he told this ecumenical gathering that the Pope gave his blessing to that Gunan Dia, you know, the top religious liberty uh, leader in Adventism, mm -hmm. a leader of the General Conference, he's part of the Executive Committee. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he was there, and 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 the, the the what they're teaching is, don't be ashamed of who you are. Yes, you don't have to change anything. We're all here to learn. You yes. have to listen to your neighbor. Yes. No, my brothers, we got to listen to God. How about that? One? Yes, we have to listen Absolutely. to the Word of God. What's interesting listen about that neighbor. is their apologies. They're saying no one must apologize for anything, and that is such a Catholic doctrine because the Catholic system believes that they're infallible. So of course they're not going to apologize, and so if they're talking about apologies, they're trying to to almost put it down on the level of every other denomination, every other uh, religion. Oh, neither one of you have to apologize to each other because one of you believe in uh, sprinkling and baptism, one of you believe in full submersion. It's unfortunate on top of that, that the same Ganaun Diop as a, as a representative of the church is not only found in this meeting, but as our previous video we talked about, reinterpreting our mission as Seventh-day Adventists. All right. of a sudden, the three angels' messages are now an ecumenical message, and we must be the most ecumenical. So you see it's just getting bolder and bolder with each video, with each article, with each passing month. We're seeing how it is getting more steeped into exactly what the papacy has been pushing for, which is a unity back with the mother church, the supposed mother church. And that's a false statement from Ganon Diab, a deceptive statement because the ecumenical movement is not Adventism, it's not Protestantism, and it's certainly not apostolic Christianity, neither. Yes. Yes. And so people have to be aware of that. God's true people that study the word of God, that study prophecy, have an understanding of true historic Adventism, understand what's going on, that this is these are leaders that are not being faithful and they're misleading the church and they're actually destroying the church yes. and they're doing the work of the antichrist the papacy yes 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 you know you know uh brethren the only reason why we're talking about uh and we're mentioning uh Ganun Diop's name is because if, if he were to go to represent himself mm -hmm. if he went as an individual Yes, he we did. Wouldn't be, we wouldn't have this conversation. Absolutely right. not. But he goes as the face of Adventism. As an ambassador for Adventism. He thinks he's, he's representing all of us. Mm -hmm. And he goes to all these events. He's not just an observer. And, you know, and even that sounds horrible because a watchman is not an observer. A watchman is someone who actually warns the people and says, he speaks. An observer is just someone who just stays quiet and doesn't say anything. Yes. But they claim to be an observer, but he's an active participant. He's an organizer. He chairs a lot of these events. Yes. He plans. He's on the planning committee the of committee, other yeah. events. He's in charge of organizing a lot of these uh, these uh, Christian global gatherings. Yes. But you know what we got to understand is if we, if not for the spirit of prophecy, you know, we we would be right in the middle of all this. Right. But because the spirit of prophecy told us that this is a movement that seeks to do one thing, reestablish papal supremacy and also undo all that Protestantism has ever done. Yes. Is it, is it just a coincidence that when Ellen White wrote that, 
the churches were not coming together. Hmm. But today, Protestantism is saying to Rome, we have your back. Yes. We're going to support you. We're one. We're together. My brother, that's Revelation 13 coming yes. to pass. Yes. And this movement is going to bring everyone to bow their knees to Rome. And I'll tell right. you why. Right. Because where is the whole concept of ecumenism comes from? You know, it comes from the Second Vatican Council. Yes, it doesn't it come does. from the Word of God. Yes, exactly. It doesn't come from the three angels' messages. For people to even make the, for people to even suggest that the three angels' messages is an ecumenical message, you have to be drunk on on the wine. You have to be drunk on the wine of Babylon to make such a foolish statement, because the three angels' message is not ecumenical. It's anti-ecumenical. Uh, yes, it is. Come out. It doesn't say go in. Come Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Yes. And it says don't worship the beast. Don't follow the beast. Don't receive the mark. Don't have anything to do with the image. And the ecumenical movement has to do with all of those things. Yes. And so we have to realize that this movement is following the orders of the Second Vatican Council Absolutely. that decree that the restoration of the churches has to take place that's the agenda that's the playbook that they're on that's leading to the to the preparation of the mark of the beast the formation of the image of the beast and you know what it's not going to end well for those who continue down that path it's going to result in the loss of souls including those who are participating in it yes absolutely and, and i'm glad you mentioned that brother andy because when we look at the second angel's message in Revelation 14, uh, it mentions how Babylon has oh. fallen. And that's referring, if you study prophecy, that's referring to the fallen Protestant churches mm -hmm. that are not being faithful and standing on the principle of the word of God, but are actually following the traditions of Rome and the false teachings. And what's interesting is that the movement that God is doing now is not really an ecumenical movement to reform our social, you know, uh, relationships with one another. It's more of a union into the truth of the word of God. Absolutely. Union into holiness and obedience to the law of God. And we, what we see is that God is making a call and he's making a call to come out of her, to come out of Babylon, to come out of all the false movements of, of, of these denominations and the principal one, the papacy. Absolutely. You know what I think is interesting? And this is uh, it's it's a it's a great truth uh, that we kind of pointed out in our newest uh, booklet that we're, we're that we're sharing with the brothers and sisters our new missionary booklet will america endure will freedom endure uh, the coming sunday law but the reason i bring that up is simply to say that at the same time that the great controversy was being published as an inside scoop for god's people directly given to the prophet of the lord at the same time another book was being published and it's called rome stoops to conquer and it outlines the almost exact same agenda, except from the Catholic perspective, the Jesuit perspective. And that book was written by Dr. E. Boyd Barrett. And it's so interesting that it confirms everything that the prophet of the Lord said would happen. And it talks about these things that are going on right now, this interdenominationalism, the, the appeal to, to, the, to the other churches to come back to the mother church. It's, it's fascinating to know that although most people don't know about the book Rome Stoops to Conquer, the great controversy has been a great light for God's people. And it's very unfortunate that with all these things happening, it's as if we have that book. Many Adventists have that book in their library gathering dust instead of blowing it off and open, opening up those pages and seeing that prophecy is coming to pass right now before our eyes. So we see that God is calling his people not to join the major uh, denominations that are in falsehood, that don't even keep his law, that Absolutely. don't acknowledge the fourth commandment. But we see that God is calling his people to separate into the truth, into holiness, 
um, we read in what was it um, in the Gospels in Jesus' high priestly prayer for unity, where he was praying for unity, for his people to be one in the truth. Mm -hmm. That's what we got to never forget in the truth. Absolutely. Where he says in uh, chapter 17 of the Gospel of John, verse 17, Father, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Now there's two, now there's two things we got to look at the word, the meaning of the word uh, sanctify. Them. It has two meanings. The first one, obviously, to be made holy. Yes. The second one is the one I want to talk about a little bit more, which means to be separated. Mm -hmm. Set aside. To be, to be set aside. So God is calling his people in the end of time yes. to be set aside into the truth. Yes. Not into false movements. Yes. And to see our Adventist leaders trying to push the church into that is very sad. Very sad. We see, we see another biblical text in Romans 16, chapter 16, verse 17, where Paul warned the believers in his time to not get wrapped up into these false unions and meetings mm -hmm. with false representatives that are not really for the truth of Amen. the Bible, not really for Christ. Amen. And he says, and he says in Romans 16, 17, he says, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them. Notice that word, mark them. That means expose them, point them out, which cause divisions and, and, and offenses contrary to the doctrine uh -huh. which ye have learned and avoid them. You Amen. see that? Amen. So we're, we're, we're to separate from those that are, that are, teaching and leading God's people into falsehood. Absolutely. That those are the really the ones that are causing the division, Paul says, because he's causing God's people to fall into falsehood, into deception. Mm -hmm. And Paul says we need to mark them. We need to expose them and avoid them. Amen. And, and look at the characteristic given in verse 18. He says, they serve not the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And here goes the description by the, the good words and the fair speeches. They deceive the hearts of the simple brothers and sisters. The reason this is such a big deal right now is not necessarily because of these well grounded Adventists who have been in the truth for several years. It may, of course, be for them as well if they're being swayed. But this is very vitally important because we're talking about new converts. We're talking about brothers and sisters who are not as grounded in the Seventh-day Adventist truth as they should be. And because of these fair speeches, these wonderful, positive, ecumenical, unity, harmony, all the synonyms of positivity that you can think of, because of this, it starts to sway them and make the Adventist truth look like some type of strict wrong message that is opposite of God. And they're, and they're deceiving by their smooth words. Oh, this is about love. Yes. This is about building relationships. Yes. This is about magnifying Christ when really it's just all deception yes. leading us away further from Christ and further from the truth in the word of God. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that, Brother Andy Roman? Yes, you know, it's like you stated previously that Babylon has fallen. Mm. They've not just fallen, uh, you know, out of truth, but they've fallen out of love. Mm. You know, they call it love, but it's the counterfeit love. Yes. They call it unity, it's the counterfeit unity. So whatever they say, it's whenever they say it's, it's something related to God's truth, say mm -hmm. yes, but it's the counterfeit to God's truth. You know, um, praise the Lord for inspiration that tells us what love is. The Bible tells us what true love is. Yes. If you love me, keep my keep commandments. My commandments, amen. Uh, Prophets and Kings 141 says, true love seeks the honor of God. Amen. How can, how can you be seeking God's honor when you're participating in iniquity? Yes. In lawlessness. Yes. How, how do you honor God through lawlessness? You know, through Eucharistic celebrations, which with Sunday, uh, Sunday celebrations. Yes. How do you honor God that way? That's not love. No, it's you not. Know, that's that's a, 
Uh, that's that's the mystery of iniquity. Mm -hmm. That's the mystery of lawlessness. And you know what the Bible says about God's attitude towards iniquity? Mm -hmm. He says he loves righteousness uh -huh. and he what? Hate he hates iniquity. Iniquity. Hate iniquity. So it's not love, okay? True love, if it was true love, they would be seeking the honor of God and the salvation of souls. That's Prophets and Kings 141. True love seeks two things, to honor God mm -hmm. and to see souls saved. The communication movement is not interested in saving anyone's soul. You know, you leave people in that condition, you don't love them. You allow people to receive the mark of the beast. You allow them to receive the seven last plagues and end up in the lake of fire. You don't love them. Right. You hate Absolutely. Them. Absolutely. We're killing them by, by not giving them the truth. Yeah. By supporting and, them and in guess, complacency. And guess who God's going to hold accountable yes. for that? And brother so, Ed, it's, yeah. it's clear that the ecumenical movement wants to completely silence and neutralize mm -hmm. God's last message of mercy. Yes. And, that's, and, and that's, I just don't understand how we cannot see that. Yes. And all of the inspired writings tell us that that's exactly what's what's happening. You're right, brother Andy. And let's and let's and let's deal with this one last point on this article with how they were praising the Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. uh faith in this in this meeting mm -hmm. where uh Ganon Diop was present mm -hmm. and we see that they were practically saying that that no one should apologize yeah. Yeah. for their belief for what they believe and for what they practice yeah yeah and how the Pentecostal denomination was being praised and so what do you what are, what are your thoughts on that in, in other words they're 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 embracing the tongue speaking counterfeit revival that we're told in great controversy would be the the false evidence that god is supposed to be working among them. them yep yep that's exactly it's romanism apostate protestantism and spiritualism, and spiritualism. And we're, told, yes, it we're, told, is. we're seeing it in real time we're told in Great Controversy, page 624, fearful sights of a supernatural character will soon be revealed in the heavens in token of the power of miracle working demons. Look at that video. Yes. Did you see that video? We're gonna brothers, we're, 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 we're gonna we're gonna place it right now. Yeah. On. We're gonna place it right Let's now. Let's let so, our so. brothers and sisters take a look at the video. Let's let them see for themselves. And then we'll come right back and we'll talk a little more about it. Next week, uh, I will be in Accra, Ghana. The Global Christian Forum is going to meet. As a matter of fact, they had asked me, a Seventh-day Adventist, to exegete John 17 and explain this text, of course, in the context of Christian unity. So a Seventh-day Adventist is presenting before other Christians the supremacy of Jesus Christ. See, so uh, the, uh, the, this is a miracle from God. on behalf of the All Africa Council of Churches as we come to this gathering in Africa today. So as I prayed about the message that God would want me to deliver to his people at this gathering, 
And I'm grateful for my Pentecostal brothers and sisters who are here because it is the Pentecostals that gave me a solid faith. Thank you, Pentecostals. As I was growing up, we had to go to school and some of the best schools in the country, as in many countries, are the Roman Catholic schools. So thank you to the Roman Catholics for my education. They were very nice sisters and very nice, uh, it was Dominican sisters at one time, and then it was the Jesuit fathers at another time, and I'm grateful for that. And then later on, I needed to do theological education, and so the Presbyterians offered me ministerial formation. Thank you to the Presbyterians. And while that was happening, I was getting my ministerial formation. Our family was going through a tough time and the United Methodists gave us a church home. Thank you to the United Methodists. But my favorite of all are the Wesleyan Methodists. They gave me a husband. I love you Methodists. So heading the Roman Catholic delegation here, all the way from the Vatican, designated by the Pope to be with us today, Archbishop Flavio Pace. Please stand. Thank you very much. Archbishop Flavio Pace. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And here with us also is the Reverend Professor Dr. Jerry Pillay, General Secretary of the World Council of Churches. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. We all are equals. You don't have to apologize for who you are or for what you believe. You have to listen to your neighbor. You have to listen without judgment, listen to what God's spirit would have you hear and take to heart. To create an open space wherein representatives from a broad range of Christian churches and inter-church organizations which confess the triune God and Jesus Christ as perfect in his divinity and humanity can gather to foster mutual respect, to explore and to address together common challenges. Through global gatherings, regional meetings and other consultations, the Global Christian Forum's focus has been on creating open spaces where trust and mutual respect can grow between the various parts of the global Christian community which have been estranged, alienated, and divided from one another. This fosters a foundation for unity which is a gift of God's Spirit. It's our calling to foster unique opportunities for the painful and divisions in the body of Christ to find healing and reconciliation to strengthen our presence and our witness in a world that is so loved by God. So it's a wonderful spirit of great unity, good conversations and people coming together to, to learn what it means to be together in Christ and sharing, participating. Now, as you can see in the video, not only Pentecostals, Methodists, yes. the Jesuits, the Catholic uh, education system. It is a praising of, oh, man, I, I see some good in you. I see some People good in you. Out. I see some good in you. And it's interesting because you see the reception that this is getting. The people are cheering this on. Yes, and when we see how people are being uh, demon-possessed in this one video, how people are like under a trance, under this demonic spell. And that, that how, how, can, how can we unite with that? How can we praise that denomination? How do you comfortably sit in a meeting like that? With all the truth and all the light that shines from the word of God and from the spirit of prophecy, how can one sit enveloped in darkness and not even squirm even a bit? You know, what's, what's frightening is how they can praise the Jesuit father. Oh, man, brother, you hit it. When, when we're told in the book, Great Controversy, yes. page 234, yes. 
that the Jesuit order, and I'm quoting, was, and it still is, but it was created the most cruel, unscrupulous power of all the champions of popery. And their mission, their mission, wherever they went, was to overthrow Protestantism and to establish papal supremacy. Oh, yeah. That's the warning that the prophet, remember, without the vision, the people are going to perish. Yes, and right. That's the, yes. That's, the, that's the direction that this movement, this universal movement, where all the churches, all the people, including many so-called our Adventist people, are, are claiming to be the most ecumenical mm. people. Yes. And we ought to be the most ecumenical. How can they how can they sit there and see this deception? Mm -hmm. How can you just stand there and just take it all in and then say, like the noon Diop said, you know, we have that video clip where he says that this is a miracle. A miracle. Because we're here. Yes, and we're and we're we're also gonna we're also gonna play that as well. The supremacy of mm -hmm. G of, of Christ. It's not the supremacy of Christ, mm. it's the reestablishment of the Antichrist. Mm the papal supremacy oh yes oh yes and and the and the, and and one of the main reasons why the ecumenical movement is so dangerous is because we see how the jesuits use ecumenism to convert protestantism protestants to catholicism amen look how that perfectly leads us to our our next article this is the end result of these meetings what is the purpose the purpose as established in Vatican II is to get the daughters, the supposed daughters, to reunite with the mother church, which is the papacy. And we're seeing it in live time. What are your what are your thoughts on that, Brother Andy Roman? Well, you know, brothers, it's it's it should be a wake-up call mm -hmm. when you have Rome boasting. Yes. You know, they're boasting about how they're turning protestants into catholics mm. and how they're using that as part of their mission well we ought not to be surprised yes. because that's what vatican ii decrees and that's what they're doing and that's what they're actively working and you know what satan is you know what satan's trying to do mm. he wants it derailed by the prophecy yes and if he can get the remnant people to join his movement his work is complete the three angels message will not be given the latter ring won't fall, Jesus won't come, and he stays the prince of this earth. That's the mindset of Satan. Yes, yes. And that's what he's eagerly, desperately trying to do. And it, it is so disheartening, but not completely discouraging, to see this uh, Dr. Casely, right. who, who is an agent of Rome, because there he is in the picture, shaking hands and in fellowship with with the man of sin right and then he goes from being in the vatican with the man of sin to be a special guest huh. a special guest at the general conference session a special lunch that ted wilson and ganun diop prepared for him oh my in the most important session in adventism that is supposed to be the voice of god we're told you know, wow. when, the, when, when the church comes in general session, it's the voice of God. Wow. But whose voice, whose voice has replaced the voice that says, come out of her, my people? Whose voice has replaced that? That's what's so discouraging to see. But, you know, what we have to see, Ellen White says, we have to take, we have to get strength uh -huh. from the cowardice of others. Oh, yes. We're supposed to get warmth from the from betrayal the of others. Yes. These things ought to only encourage us yes. to stay fast and hold strong to the work. In times like this, we had to ask ourselves just three questions. What is the church? What is the mission of the church? And where in the world are we headed? Oh, that's right. That will help us understand the position that, that we have to take. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely, definitely. Um, I would like to read a, uh, in closing, I would like to read a quotation from the Spirit of Prophecy Manuscript Releases, Volume 14. Um, it's a very important passage here. 
statement. Notice how it reads. It says deceptions, delusions, and postures will increase. Mm -hmm. There will be one fierce struggle before the, the man of sin shall be disclosed to this world. Huh. Who he is and what has been his work. While the Protestant world is becoming very tender, notice this, while the Protestant world is becoming very tender and affectionate mm -hmm. toward the man of sin, don't we see that in the ecumenical movement? Absolutely. He's, he's the most popular pope there is right, right? now. So not God's people take their place as a bold, violent, violent, so valiant uh -huh. soldiers, excuse me, of Jesus Christ to meet the issue which must come to their lives hid with Christ in God. Amen. Amen. So that's amazing. We see that as God's people and the world is getting very tender hearted with the man of sin, the papacy and building these strong relationships and the ecumenical movement, uh -huh. you know, God's people should be standing as strong soldiers. Oh, yes. Courageous, brave, courageous, brave, uh -huh. speaking up. Yes. Warning the people yes. to stay away from the apostasy, to stay away from the deception of this movement mm. that is sweeping the world, yeah, that is, yeah. that is, that is sweeping the world into one frame of mind, one, one religious system yes. with the papacy at the head of it, mm. you know, and if we don't do our job as Seventh-day Adventists, then who will, who is God going to you? Absolutely. It's like we always say, Pastor, it's unfortunate to see devil worshipers, Jesuits, all kinds of other den denominations and religions being so firm and so true to the lies that they preach and they share. But God's people being gifted with a light of truth, a light of grace that converts, that emboldens us to move forward in victory. Is as if God's people don't want to lift the standard. They don't want to uh, respond to the call. It's as if we don't want to be part of the Lord's army. Or it's as if we've gotten tired of being part of the Lord's army. And it's an unfortunate thing because the only way this new uh, interpretation of the three angels message or this new uh, support that we're giving with ecumenism, the only reason this has any footing is because we have lost hold of the great doctrines that we have been given, the yeah. pillars of our faith. We've lost our we've lost identity our footing. and our distinctive Amen. Like our message. brother uh, Andy mentioned, yes. our identity. Who are we? Who are we now? You have any, you know, uh, any final closing thoughts, Brother Andy? Yeah, yeah. you know what? Our identity has been stolen. You've heard of the stolen, stealing someone's identity? Yes, yes, stolen. yes. But you know, it really has been stolen. We kind of like we've sold it. Yeah. Kind of like Esau sold his birthright. Oh, brother. You know, but yeah, you know, we, we need to file a report with the law enforcement for identity <laughs> theft. You know? But Amen. you know, I, I do want to just two quick points. Um, yeah, go ahead. So Absolutely, brother. Christ, Absolutely. You know, they claim that that they get together, you know, Lung Diop is telling people that he's there to to exalt the supremacy of Christ. Now, the supremacy of Christ is also the authority. It's the same thing. Supremacy right, authority. absolutely. What is the sign of his authority? What's the sign of Christ's authority? Think about that for a second. He's given us a sign. Oh, let yes. me, let, let's change the word sign. What's the seal, seal. of Amen. his authority? Amen. Okay? If they're there to exalt the supremacy of Christ, well, what's the seal of his authority? Amen, supremacy? brother. The Sabbath, the now, Holy brother, Sabbath. They're, they're, they're there to exalt the authority and the seal and the mark of the Antichrist mm, because they're is. not exalting the Sabbath of the Lord. No, they're, they're not. not. No, they're not. They're promoting the Eucharist. That's mm. the foundation of the mm. ecumenical movement, Sunday Eucharist. Wow. And I'm, 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 I'm glad you mentioned I'm that. Glad I'm, you I'm, did, I'm glad you mentioned that, Brother Andy, because that is the main uh, ingredient in this whole ecumenical movement since years back. Yes. 
and all the ecumenical uh, uh, movements and meetings that they have had, the Eucharist, infant baptism, the Eucharist is always there. So, so I'm glad you mentioned that. How can we join a movement and say it's for Christ, for the supremacy of Christ, when what's at the heart of it is what's being promoted and lifted up is the Eucharist? <laughs> and then to top it all off, brothers, the Eucharist was also one of the pivotal reasons that the Reformation ever existed in the first place. <laughs> this idea of transubstantiation, this idea of creating the body of the Creator and the blood of the Creator, and one could this this paganistic uh, ritual was actually one of the main reasons that the reformers decided. You know what? We can't be part of this entity. We can't be part of the antichrist power, the papacy. Pagan, paganistic cannibalism. Amen. <laughs> which was part of pagan religions because yes. they claimed to eat their deity. Yes. Yes. And so that's what we also see in the in the prophets of Baal. Yes. They were also involved in that form of paganism. And so now we see the Antichrist power, the papacy, trying to bring that at the heart of everything, the Eucharist. It's interesting because they do it almost tongue in cheek, right in your face. Hey, the whole reason that we even have denominations, one of the more pivotal reasons is because of this very thing, the Eucharist. And now that we're going to do ecumenism, you know what? To be part of this, you must be part of the Eucharist. How ironic is that? And it's interesting because... Uh, with the Jesuits using ecumenism to convert Protestants, mm. that's how one of that's how one of the Protestant evangelicals was converted to Catholicism. Oh, yes. He oh, was yes. deceived by one of the Jesuits into into believing that there's a deeper experience, a deeper communion, a deeper, communion, a deeper experience in Christ through the Eucharist. Yes. yes. It, it, they call it a deeper expression. Mm. There you go. Not an expression of Christianity. It's paganism. Yes, it and, is. You know, listen, God's three angels' messages calls us to embrace the seal of the living God. Yes. The true supremacy of Christ, the Christ of the Bible, the Jesus who's coming in glory, and his seal. A seal contains his name, contains his title, and contains... Yes. Uh, his domain. His and that's why the seventh day Sabbath, it tells us that he's the creator of heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. And heaven it is and the earth. true Sabbath. And listen, I, I want to just, I'll, I'll close with this statement. You know, this is from Revere and Herald. Amen. Amen. Uh, December 13, 1892. Has God called the children of Israel out of Egypt that they might keep his Sabbath? Mm -hmm. Why, why did he call them out? So that they, they would keep, keep the, the Sabbath. Sabbath. They can finally it, keep the Sabbath. As long as there were slaves. Yes. In Egypt. Hmm. So as God called them out to keep the Sabbath, comma, so he calls his people out of Babylon yes. that they may not worship the beast and his image. Amen. The man of sin who thought to change times and laws and exalt himself above God by presenting the spurious Sabbath hmm. to the world. Yes. Make no mistake. It is a it is a lie for, 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 for them to tell us, let's just unite on the things we agree. Rome Rome hmm. wants you to, hmm. to forget about hmm. what we believe. Yes. Rome wants you to not focus on doctrine. Rome wants you to be passive and to be quiet yes. and to Zip your lip yes. and to All bite your nine. tongue and not say a word. Right. At the same time, mm -hmm. you see what Rome is doing right now. They're pushing the wine on the rest yes, of the Yes, they are. Yes, they are. You, you, you can't take that deal. You take that deal, it will result in the loss of many souls. Yes, yes it will. Yes, it will. Well said, brother. Well said. Amen. Um, thank you so much, brother Andy, for sharing with us and um lead us out in a, in a word of prayer please all right well listen it's been a blessing uh to, to be able to do this and we pray that we pray that these humble efforts you know will will wake up our brothers because listen we yes. we don't want our brothers to be lost yes. and you know we don't want 
evangelicals and the Pentecostals and the Baptists. God, God wants to save them and see them in the kingdom. And, and that's the only interest. That's the only motive for which we're doing this. That's because right. we want to see souls saved as a result. Let's go ahead and pray. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. We thank you for this opportunity. We can meet with uh, uh, my brother, pastor friend, David Jimenez, Sergio. Pray, Lord, that, uh, that you may continue to work in their lives and in their ministries. We pray, Lord, that you may be with all the faithful throughout the world. Help us to realize, Lord, that this is a wake of call for us to realize that things are not going to continue for much longer. Yeah. Everything has been prepared. The beast and the image, and the, they're ready to do their wickedness. And you're ready to pour out your spirit upon the faithful. Help us, Lord, to be that faithful people. Help us to stand for truth now. So when the loud cry comes, Lord, we can partake of that glorious manifestation of your power. Lord. All right. We thank you. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. We pray that you were blessed, all of you that were watching, tuning in. You have been listening to God's last message of mercy. And remember, as we always say, it is your time to make a decision. Will you stand for the truth? Or will you fall for the deception like the rest of the world? May God bless you all. Advent Messenger Church would like to thank you for joining us. Prayerfully consider supporting us in carrying forward the special work that God has for these solemn times. You can securely donate online at our web address, adventmessengerchurch.com, or you can mail in your donation to P.O. Box 690154, Orlando, Florida, 32869. 